No matter how you feel about the United Nations, it's the one place on planet Earth where nations get together and attempt to speak with one voice. That's why their resolutions can make a big difference. So when people all around the world see that approximately 40% of the UN Human Rights Council resolutions were against just one country, most of us would assume that country must be a really bad place. Perhaps ruled by, oh, say, a genocidal dictator who kills his own people, or maybe a tyrant continually threatening to annihilate another country. But actually, the country that has been condemned more times than every repressive country on Earth combined is a democracy. The only viable democracy in the Middle East, Israel. And with these repeated resolutions against Israel, it's easy to see why so many in the international community perceive Israel as a major cause of world problems. But are all these resolutions really justified? Because whether or not you agree with how Israel is handling its many challenges, when you do a basic comparison, like the number of deaths Israel is responsible for with the number of condemnations they've received, and then make that same comparison with other countries, it paints a surprising picture of a possible double standard. What could explain the enormous imbalance? Quick history lesson. In 1975, Cuba needed to gather support in order to take down the biggest democratic superpower dominating the global schoolyard, the United States. Seeing how the UN was mostly controlled by the democratic superpowers, Cuba, along with other communist nations, finally found a way to even the playing field. Because it just so happened that, at the same time, a number of Muslim countries were looking for new creative ways to gang up on Israel. So the communists realized that by joining the Muslims' anti-Israel coalition, they could create an unstoppable voting bloc inside the UN. Because with every resolution they passed against Israel, they simultaneously discredited Israel's ally, the United States. So in 1975, the newfound communist Muslim voting bloc spearheaded the passing of a UN resolution that officially stated, Zionism is a form of racism. Yes, Zionism, the movement trying to find ways to protect Jews from racism, was redefined as racism. Which is kind of like saying the civil rights movement is racism and Martin Luther King is a racist. This is why resolution after resolution after resolution against Israel from 1975 until this day easily passes through the UN. But today, this movement has a new tool for attacking Israel as the cause of all our problems the UN's Durban Review Conference on Racism. Durban is charged with finding the real root of racism, and at the last conference, keynote speaker and human rights best friend Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, yeah, the guy who openly called for Israel's annihilation, revealed that Zionism is not only racist, but the true root of racism throughout the world. And what has history taught us about what tends to happen when one ethnic group is believed to be the hidden root to all the world's problems? What is happening at Durban is catastrophic, not only for Jews, but for the whole world. And it's growing, spreading, and gaining credibility through Durban. In fact, this year, representatives from over 140 different countries will descend on New York City for Durban as speakers work to convince them about the secret Jewish cause to worldwide racism. Let's learn from history and this time act before false accusations lead to violence. We cannot leave this message unchallenged. We need your help. We're asking you, your friends, families, neighbors, and faith community to join us in New York City and expose this threat and confront this lie before it once again takes hold of half the world.